Alrighty, everybody, we're gonna start off today with a personal favorite, HD 189773B. Seeing as most of these plants today are only referred to with scientific labels, to make my life easier, I've made the executive decision to give them nicknames. HD 189773B will now be referred to as Snow Globe, purely based on my personal need to see this environment recaptured in a globe. On October 6th of 2005, a team of astronomers announced the discovery of Snow Globe, which was detected using Doppler spectrum. Real-time radial velocity measurements detected the Rossiter-McLaughlin effect caused by the planet passing in front of its star before photometric measurements confirmed that the planet was transiting. In 2006, a team led by Drake Deming announced the detection of strong infrared thermal emission from the transiting exoplanet by measuring the flux decrement, or decrease of total light during its prominent secondary eclipse, which is when the planet passes behind the star. The mass of the planet is estimated to be 16% larger than Jupiter's, with the planet completing an orbit around its host star every 2.2 days and at an orbital speed of 152.5 kilometers per second. In 2008, a team of astrophysicists appeared to have detected and monitored the planet's visible light using polarimetry, and the result was confirmed and refined by the same team in 2011. They found that the planet, Albedo, is significantly larger in blue light than in the red, most probably due to Rayleigh scattering and molecular absorption in the red. The blue color of the planet was confirmed in 2013, which would have made Snow Globe the first planet to have its overall color determined by two different techniques. These measurements in polarized light have since been disputed by two separate teams using more sensitive equipment, with upper limits of the signal provided therein. Bear with my pronunciation of the big words today, folks. I'm doing my very best. The blueness of the planet might have been a result of Rayleigh scattering. On July 11th of 2007, a team led by Giovanna Tonetti published the results of their observations using the Spitzer Space Telescope, concluding there is solid evidence for significant amounts of water vapor in the planet's atmosphere. Follow-up observations made using the Hubble Space Telescope confirmed the presence of water vapor, neutral oxygen, and also the organic compound methane. Later, very large telescope observations also detected the presence of carbon monoxide on the day side of the planet. It is currently unknown how the methane originated, as the planet's high 700 degrees Celsius temperature should cause the water and methane to react, replacing the atmosphere with carbon monoxide. Look, I get irritable when the weather reaches the 20s here on Earth, so I know I wouldn't survive that oven at all. Nevertheless, the presence of roughly 0.004% of water vapor fraction by volume in the atmosphere of snow globe was confirmed with high resolution emission spectra taken in 2021. I'm sure after all that fascinating information dumping, somebody out there is asking, okay, Alexa, why should this planet not exist? Well, here's the thing. The weather on snow globe is kind of deadly. The winds, made up of silicate particles, blow up to 8,700 kilometers per hour, and observations have found evidence that it rains molten glass horizontally. I'm trying to imagine sideways glass raining down, and I'm drawing a bunch of scary blanks. Personally speaking, that sounds cool to watch from a very safe distance, ergo the nickname, but not up close anytime soon. It also messes with everything I know about physics, which admittedly isn't a whole lot, but still. Alrighty, next up, TRES-2b was discovered on August 21st of 2006 by the Transatlantic Exoplanet Survey by detecting the transit of the planet across its parent star. The discovery was confirmed by the WM Keck Observatory on September 8th of 06 by measuring the radial velocity of the star that hosts TRES-2b. Alrighty, nickname time. I'm thinking midnight. The planet was identified in 2011 as the darkest known exoplanet, reflecting less than 1% of any light that hits it, and is located 750 light years away from the solar system. I'm talking like worse than charcoal or the Vanna Black 3.0 paint in terms of reflection on the surface of midnight. Look, I recently dealt with a not so fun power outage. I don't particularly want to imagine living in a place where the darkness just sort of swallows everything up. My mental health can't take that. The planet's mass and radius indicate that it is a gas giant with a bulk composition similar to that of Jupiter. Unlike Jupiter, but similar to many planets detected around other stars, Midnight is located very close to its star and belongs to the class of planets known as Hot Jupiters. This system was within the field view of the Kepler spacecraft, and it continues to be studied by other projects, and the parameters are continuously improving. A 2007 study improved stellar and planetary parameters, whereas a 2008 study concluded that the system is a binary star system. This significantly affects the values for the stellar and planetary parameters, because nobody really knows why the planet is so dark. One reason could be an absence of reflective of clouds, such as those which make Jupiter so bright, due to midnight's proximity to its parent star and, you know, the high temperature. Another reason could be the presence in the atmosphere of light-absorbing chemicals, such as vaporized sodium, potassium, or gaseous titanium oxide. What do you think? 
Let me know in the comments. How about we move on and explore Wasp 12? Okay, I'm sure you all get the drill by now. Hmm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I'm sure you can see the steam pouring out of the top of my head. Oh, I got it. Firefly. And though that's not intentionally a reference to one of my favorite shows, but make of that what you will. Firefly is a hot Jupiter and was discovered on April 1st by the Super Wasp Planetary Transit Survey. Yeah, a lot of folks originally thought it was a joke, but I assure you, it is not. Hot Jupiters, or hot Saturns, are a class of gas giant exoplanets that are inferred to be physically similar to Jupiter, but that have very short orbital periods. The close proximity to their stars and high surface atmosphere temperatures resulted in their informal name, aka hot Jupiters. Firefly is the hottest planet ever found at a sizzling 2,250 degrees Celsius, which is as hot as some stars. This find could challenge models of how close planets can uh, cozy up to their host stars. Firefly takes only a little over one Earth day to orbit its star, in contrast to about 365.25 days for Earth to orbit the Sun. Consequently, it has one of the lowest densities for exoplanets, which is inflated by the flux of energy from said star. On December 3rd of 2013, scientists working with the Hubble Space Telescope reported detecting water in the atmosphere of the exoplanet. Planet. In September of 2017, researchers working on the HST announced that Firefly reflects just 6% of the light that shines on its surface. As a result, the exoplanet has been described as black as asphalt and pitch black. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I think I feel like I'm forgetting something. I just know it. Oh, right. This planet will be destroyed by its parent star in 10 million years. The star is so hot that it is tearing apart the planet's atmosphere, and the extreme gravity causes giant tidal forces that are stretching the planet into the shape of an egg. Temperature on this planet is about 2,210 degrees Celsius, which is insane. I can't even survive 35 degrees without melting. Out of everything I've listed today, this is probably what's most likely to land me on some sort of a watch list. Hey NASA, if y'all actually release the info you hoard on aliens coming to Earth and what you've discovered, people wouldn't demand it so much. So Planet 9 is the ninth planet in the outer region of the solar system. I'm sorry Pluto, I promise I'll make it up to you. Its gravitational effects could explain the peculiar clustering of orbits for a group of extreme trans-Neptunian objects that orbit the Sun at distances averaging more than 250 times that of the Earth. These etnos tend to make their closest approaches to the Sun in one sector, and their orbits are similarly tilted. These alignments suggest that this undiscovered planet may be shepherding the orbits of the most distant known solar system objects. Based on earlier considerations, this super Earth-sized planet would have predicted a mass of 5 to 10 times that of the Earth, and an elongated orbit 400 to 800 times as far from the Sun as the Earth. The orbit estimation was refined somewhat in 2021, but the mathematical equation is too much for my brain to comprehend today. Constantin Batygin and Michael E. Brown suggested that Planet 9 might be the core of a giant planet that was ejected from its original orbit by Jupiter during the genesis of the solar system, while others proposed that the planet was captured from another star, was once a rogue planet, or that it formed on a distant orbit and was pulled into an eccentric orbit by a passing star. So, a lot of fun theories there. Although sky surveys such as Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer and PanStars did not detect Planet 9, they have not ruled out the existence of a Neptune diameter object in the outer solar system. The ability of these past sky surveys to detect Planet 9 was dependent on its location and characteristics. Further surveys of the remaining regions are ongoing using Neowise and the 8 meter Subaru telescope. Okie dokie, everybody, how about I end today with a planet that is just too lethal to be of any good to humanity? AU Microscopy B just so happens to be constantly tormented with deadly x-rays. And I feel like x-ray is as fitting a nickname as could be for this planet. Nestled less than 32 light years away from Earth, this planetary rebel orbits within the clutches of AU Microscopy, a stellar maverick prone to celestial tantrums. In the intricate ballet of the cosmos, x-ray waltzes around its fiery partner in a mesmerizing dance, completing an orbit every eight and a half days. The planet's existence was unveiled to us mere Earthlings in the year 2020, a discovery that added a fascinating chapter to our understanding of distant planetary systems. Now, this isn't an ordinary star. It stands among the celestial youth. Yeah, an adolescent throwing stellar tantrums that, in turn, shape the destiny of its captive planet. The planetary misfit is ensnared within a looming disk of spectral dust, a cosmic ghost that casts shadows over its cosmic residence. The drama unfolds in the form of deadly, relentless x-rays and radiation unleashed by the star. These cosmic onslaughts paint a vivid picture of a planet caught in the throes of celestial torment. A celestial entity for whom the prospect of life 
is only a distant dream. The very fabric of space around X-ray echoes with the harsh symphony of its stars fewer. Hey folks, just saying, there's a reason you wear lead vests at the dentist for protection, and why they stand behind a wall during said procedure. High levels of radiation are lethal. And that brings me to the end of my list, which means it's time for comment section shoutouts. From top 5 scary upcoming Netflix documentaries you need to watch, user PatW1980 said that they really love that I'm a wrestling fan. It ties together their two favorite things, horror and wrestling together in one channel, never changed. Thank you so much Pat, what can I say? I'm a sucker for Abaddon, John Moxley, and my girl, Rhea Ripley. From the same video, user is male my yet. 6181 mentioned that Curry and Sinai, the Jolly Joseph case, is a very good documentary. Thank you so much for the recommendation, totally adding that to my watch list when I get home. And finally, King Shadow 8782 simply said fantastic. Thanks King, always a pleasure to see your name in the comment section. And that brings me to the end of my time once again, I've been Alexa, your resident ooky spooky girly, and if you enjoyed my ramblings today, could you help us out by giving this video a like, subscribing if you aren't already, hit the bell for more out of this world content from us here at Top 5 Scary Videos, and I'll see y'all next time you lovely spooky people.